Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you how to make a basic car controller in Unity. Let's start. Before we continue with the tutorial, there is something important I want to mention. All the 3D models you see in this project were created using 3D AI Studio. 3D AI Studio is an AI powered platform that makes 3D modeling super easy even if you have zero experience. For example, with the Image to 3D tool, you just upload a regular photo and the AI instantly converts it into a 3D object. It's insanely useful for prototyping or filling your scene quickly with the objects. Then there is Text to 3D, where all you need to do is type a simple description, like a sports car or a cute tree with apple. The AI takes your words and generates a model that matches your vision. With Image Studio, you can also generate high quality 2D images based on written prompts, which is great for concept art or backgrounds. And Texture AI is a total game changer. It allows you to restyle your 3D models using prompts. Let's say you have a cat model, just type green eyes and paint it with brush. Lastly, the Remesh tool lets you optimize your models by adjusting their form or mesh quality, whether you are preparing assets for game engine like Unity or just reducing file size. 3D AI Studio is definitely worth a try. You will find the link in the description. Let's continue. First, create a new script called Car Controller and open it. And let's add some variables that control how the car behaves. Motor force is how powerful the car's engine is. Brake force is how strong the brakes are. Max steer angle is the maximum angle that the front wheels can turn. Next, we have our wheel colliders. These are invisible components that handle the actual physics of the car. Each wheel has its own collider and they are what let Unity simulate things like friction, suspension and grip. Then we have got the 3D wheel models, the ones we actually see in the game. These are just visual, they don't affect the physics, but we'll update them to match the collider positions later so everything looks right. After that, let's add some helper variables. Horizontal input captures whether the player is pressing left or right, usually A and D keys or the arrow keys. Vertical input is for forward and backward movement, typically W and S keys. Current steer angle is the angle we are actually turning the wheels at right now, based on player input. Current brake force is how much braking force we are applying at this exact moment. This braking is a simple true-false value that tells us if the brake is being pressed. So our first function is getInput. This function will capture what the player is doing. Here in getInput, we are reading the horizontal input that's left and right arrows or A and D keys and the vertical input that's W and S keys for forward and backward. We are also checking if the player is pressing the brake, usually the spacebar. Next function is handle motor. This function takes the vertical input and turns it into real motor force on the wheels. Inside handle motor, we take the vertical input value, multiply it by our motor force and apply that to the front wheels. If the player is braking, we also apply brake force to all the wheels. Next function is apply braking. Actually, to keep it clean, I'll create a separate apply braking function. This will check if the player is braking and apply brake force evenly to all the wheels. Next function is handle steering. This will rotate the front wheels based on the player's horizontal input. So here, we calculate the steering angle by multiplying the player's left-right input by our maximum steering angle. Then we apply that angle to both front wheel colliders. Next function is update single wheel. It just handles one wheel at a time, gets its position and rotation and applies it to the 3D wheel model. Next function is update wheels. Now even though the car is moving physically, we need to make sure the 3D models of the wheels actually move and spin visually. In update wheels, we'll update the position and rotation of each wheel model based on the collider's data. This way the wheels don't just float there, they look like they are really turning with the car. And the last one is update function, is the heart of our script, constantly checking inputs and updating the car's behavior. That's it.
Now open your scene and attach the script to your car object. After that, assign all the wheel colliders and the visual wheel models one by one in the inspector. Let's try it. As you can see, our car is moving and it's able to turn in the direction we want. That's it. If you like this video, please subscribe, also leave a comment. See you in the next video.